Biochar is almost all carbon. You put it into the soil and it stays there for millennia. And this is demonstrated by the fact that, uh, by, by the existence of soils down in, in uh, South America called Terra Preta, which is Portuguese for dark earth. The people who were living there at that time would build large covered fires and essentially make charcoal. And then they would incorporate that into the soil. That soil is so valuable it's being mined and sold in garden centers. Let's look at the contrast. Let's consider a cornfield that we have uh, here in Massachusetts. This field has been farmed for a long time. Carbon's largely gone. So now you're putting in the uh, commercial fertilizers and so on. And so you have essentially no longer a carbon-based system. You're no longer relying on, on soil nutrients or the whole microorganism relationship with, with plants, and it's so important in getting the soil's mineral nutrients to the plant. In contrast, when you take biochar and you put that into the soil, the biochar itself has a, has a vast surface area, a huge pore volume. What that does is it fosters the, um, the, the, the growth and development of a very healthy microbial system. When you put carbon back into the soil as a soil amendment, you um, essentially recarbonize the soil, and carbon is an essential carbon with hydrogen is an essential uh, component in a healthy topsoil. We're very active in the beneficial effects of biochar as a soil amendment. Uh, it has a tr has a tremendous amount of capability to increase crop yield, uh, decrease the use of fertilizer, decrease the use of water to solve problems such as the decarbonization of soil. We can mix it with uh, dredge spoil material and reclaim that soil. Studies have shown that you reduce the need for nitrogen phosphorus uh, fertilizer component by about 40 to 45 percent and you also reduce the need for water on those crop situations by 20 to 25 percent and from a farmer's perspective those marginal improvements make a huge difference The way that we farm has allowed us to grow into a modern, civilized society around the world. But it has had its consequences. And one of those big consequences has been to deplete soils. In the last, say, 80 to 90 years, post-World uh, War I, we've increasingly used chemical fertilization as the main way to get nutrients into the soil, albeit temporarily so that we can grow crops on a mass scale and support the population that has ever increased. We're also talking about large amounts of carbon being sequestered in the biochar. We're putting that back into the earth. That's important to get that carbon out of the atmosphere where it's not only not useful to us in the quantities in which it is now, but it's actually a detriment to human society and all animals on earth, but also why not take it and put it back into the soil where it's most useful for our trees, for our other shrubbery, for our vegetative uh, plants, which we need for crops, for, for, for food? Um, that's where the carbon needs to be, and this is a process that puts it back.